In this segment, let's have a look at using timecode. The idea with timecode is that you have a clock on your audio recorder, which you're gonna record your audio separately with. You also have a clock of some sort uh, connected to your camera and recording timecode. So you have a timecode recorded to the sound, you have timecode recorded to your cameras, and then when you get into post, it makes it very, very easy to sync it up very quickly. So let's take a look at how that works at a very practical level. Here we have our sound device is 633. It has a timecode generator built into it. We also could do the very same thing with a Zoom F4, which also has timecode, uh, timecode generator built in. Here's how you get um, timecode into the Zoom or out of the Zoom, depending on what you're going to do. And you could do the same thing, of course, with a Zoom F8 and pretty much any professional uh, recorder, mixer, will have this as well, time code in and out. Now, um, as I mentioned, you also need clocks on the computers, or sorry, the cameras, <laughs> and that's what these do here. So these are little time code generators as well. So what you can do is you choose a master clock. It's generally gonna be, in my case, I will use the recorder as the master clock. So this has the time code generator in it. I will take this one and sync it up to the clock in the sound devices. And we'll do the same thing with this one if we're gonna do a multi-camera shoot. These are both um, two different products that do the same thing. This one's called Tentacle Sync. This one's called the Mose Gear, which is a company, TIG Q28. Um, they both do the similar thing, slightly different form factors. Um, roughly, actually I think the TIG is a little bit more expensive. The differences between these two, I'm not gonna go into great detail, but the Tentacle Sync, you hook up to your mobile phone to um, check on the settings and change the settings. On the TIG, you actually use a tool here. You can choose your frame rate um, and you can choose your time code level and whether you want to jam or not. Um, so this one's really kind of self-contained. This one, you need to use your smartphone to um, get it all set up. So let's show you how this does, this works. So if we come in here to our time code menu and we go to the gem menu, you can see that it has a clock and it's counting up. It's been on for 26 minutes, 22 seconds. <laughs> and um, we're gonna use that as our, again, as our master clock. So that's always running. You can see that uh, down here on the main screen. So the way we do this is, um, the very first thing we have to do is make sure that we have the frame rate set correctly on all of the clocks. And the frame rate, of course, is determined by the camera itself. So that is the frame rate at which the camera is shooting. You'll notice again here, if we come into the time code menu, we actually have the, the frame rate already set to 23.98. In this particular case, we're gonna do, again, a two camera shoot. Both the cameras will be shooting at 23.98. One thing to note, uh, a lot of consumer and prosumer cameras or DSLRs or, you know, like the smaller mirrorless cameras, you have to be careful. When they say frame rate, they don't always tell the entire truth. For example, the um, a lot of the cameras will say 24 frames per second, when in reality they're recording 23.98. And those are two different things at a technical level. So if you are not sure on your camera, go ahead and record a little segment at the frame rate that, you know, you have it set to, then bring it in onto your computer, load it into your nonlinear editor, whether that be Premiere, Final Cut, whatever, and look at the information on that file and you'll see the exact frame right there. It'll tell you the truth. <laughs> a lot of times, again, when they say 24, they're really shooting 23.98. When they say um, 30, they're actually shooting 29.97. So that's just something that you wanna check on. So in this case, we're gonna shoot with all of them at 23.98. So I have uh, the TIG here, Q28. Uh, you can see here this setting, which is a little switch that I can change with a screwdriver. Um, the setting zero is 23.976 or 98, which is the same thing, is zero setting. So we already have that set correctly. On the tentacle sync, we have to do this with our phone. Let me show you how that works. Okay, on the phone, what we have to do is plug this in. We need to plug this in. Turn it on with the switch here. Open up the app. Okay, so here we are in the app. We're connected to the tentacle sync. You can see that it's set to 23.98 as our frame rate. That's good. We have an output volume level here and we can choose line level or mic level. 
In this case, I'm going to leave it at line level for now. I will change it to mic level once I hook it up to my camera's microphone input. But for now, I need to leave it at line level because I'm going to sync. I'm going to jam sync this one from the sound devices. And then I'm going to jam sync this one from the tentacle sync. So to jam sync this, I need it to get a line level signal from this. Okay, so we're good there. All right, now to this, this one has a couple of different modes, a red mode and a green mode. Red means it's waiting to receive time code from another device. So we have a sync cable here. It's a 3.5 millimeter TRS on this side, plug that in. And I have actually Limo, five pin Limo on this side. And this is what plugs into the sound devices. Now it starts flashing green. That means it has jammed to this. So now these two have the exact same time. Great. Now to jam this one to this one, what I need to do is it's, you can see here there's a time code level setting and it says set it to zero when you want to jam. So we have it set to zero and I just use a 3.5 millimeter plug into the jam input there. It's gonna come from the output on the tentacle. Um, before I do that, of course, I need to turn this on when it's flashing like that, that means that it's just running, but it will go do a long blink when I, when I sync it up here, when I jam sync it. So I'm plugging into the tentacle now, and you can see now it's doing the long blink, meaning it's jammed up to the tentacle sync. So I can unplug that. Okay, now we're all set because this, this, and the sound devices all are using the same exact time at this point. And now what we can do is if we actually hooked up, um, here, here's a really important under thing to understand when we're doing this. When we're using devices like this, we are actually going to send an audio signal to the camera. That's how we're gonna hook these up to the camera is their outputs here actually feed an audio signal that is an analog signal um, that's actually representing time. So if I hooked up a set of headphones, let's just do that really quickly here. And you can do this test as well. Um, but before I do that, I want to actually change the output, <laughs> the level here. I want to turn it down, so I'm turning it down a little bit. Now, when I connect a set of headphones, um, headphones, and I plug it into the output on the TIG. Hear that? That is actually the time code that's being sent from the TIG. And we can do the same thing here with the tentacle sync. Now that one seems a lot louder, and in fact it is because that one's still at line level. So that's where I'm going to come back in here, plug this into my phone. Okay, we're plugged into the phone. Uh, we're going to change this now back to mic level because I want to send a mic level signal to the camera. So we should be good there. Now when I hook up the headphones... Not nearly as loud. <laughs> okay, so we're sending a mic level signal now out of both of these devices. So we will connect this one to camera number one into the camera number one's microphone input, this one to camera number two's microphone input, and then we'll show you where we go from there. Now that we have everything uh, jam synced together, so all the clocks are on the same exact time, what we wanna do is connect each of these to the cameras so that the audio time code will be recorded to the camera. And that makes it so that we can sync up the audio and the camera files in post. So the way we do that in this case for the TIG Q28, we just need a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter cable, TRS on both sides. Um, here we're gonna go into the output on the TIG. And here we have just a DSLR, Nikon D750, something you would probably use on a lower budget type shoot. Um, but you come into the microphone input on this. Let's turn this guy on and put it into video mode. 
You will notice here on the meter, now on the left channel, we have time code coming in and it is completely crushing it up against the top. <laughs> so what we have to do is we need to actually change the mic input level. So we can actually change the input level on the camera here, bring it down. I'm coming down all the way to off. I have to come almost all the way to off to get it to a reasonable level. We want it at about, you know, minus uh, 12 dB or so. Don't really get a, a great meter on the Nikon, but that's probably good there. We can also adjust the level on the TIG here. As I showed you before, if I pull this down this way a little bit, you can see that changes our meter a little bit. So we could probably come up just a touch on the camera. So what that does again is now, every time we start recording on the camera, it will record to the left channel time code from our time code generator, which again is the same exact time that's on our audio recorder to make it so that we can sync them up in post. Now, after our shoot, we bring all of our footage in. These are from the cameras, camera one, camera two. And of course we have our audio as well. We just drag these into Tentacle Sync Studio. This is software that comes with the Tentacle Sync time code generators. Um, it only runs on Mac, uh, but they also do have another app on Windows. It's not quite as full featured as this, um, but we'll come back to that later. So here I've got the audio file. Let's come back and get our footage here. Let's just do a single clip first to illustrate that. So I've got the, the video clip and I've got the audio clip. Again, remember that we recorded to, in this case, we were working with the sound devices 633. So time code in that particular case was at, actually written to the file in the metadata. It's not actually written as a, an audio track like it was on the camera. So the camera, channel one, was actually the time code generator sending an audio signal in. So this is audio in this case, and the time code in this case is actually what they call file time code. All right, so what we do is we click on the sync map and you can see it sync them up here. Let's go ahead and play a second. Here's our little multicam shoot. Camera A right there, camera B right here. And then we have a microphone boot. Okay, so that's all synced up. Now, what if we did a multicam shoot? Let's add that other clip, sync that up, and you can see now we have two different video clips and the audio clip all synced up. Now, to really see this, let's bring it into Premiere. Haha, <laughs> that's a funny frame. All right, so we have three different options in terms of getting this information out to your editor. Um, there is an XML export. You can export to an AAF format, which is another sort of uh, a format that's very similar to XML, but this is for Avid Media Composer. And then we have Media, where you can actually take what you've synced up here and save it as a new video clip. Now, for Premiere editors, I would recommend XML. That works nicely. Um, it also can export to XML format that works in Final Cut Pro 7. I don't know that anyone or very many people are still using Final Cut Pro 7, but it does export to a format that will work with Final Cut Pro 7. Unfortunately, it doesn't yet work for Final Cut Pro 10, from my understanding and my um, tests. Um, but if you're a Final Cut Pro 10 editor, um, I would just export the media. All right, so we're going to export XML. We're going to go into Premiere. You have just a few settings here. We'll go ahead and save those. And we're all set. Now that we're in Premiere here, I will just double click to import our XML file. And what we get here is a we get a sequence plus a bin with the original files. This is the A camera, the B camera, and the sound, all recorded separately. If I double click this sequence here, you can see it opens up the three clips and it's all set to go, all synced up and, and ready to start sure. editing. Now, if I did this multicam, I have to do a couple of extra steps, but if I just did a single camera and a single audio track, I'd be set to go. I could start editing here. And in fact, if you did multiple video clips with multiple audio clips, it would lay them all out here based on the time code values. So this, the clip that you shot first would be first, and then the clip you saw, shot after that would show up next on the sequence, so on and so forth. And you can move things around and cut it up and do whatever you want with it. If we're doing multicam, it's a little bit more complicated, and this is where I think you need to do, I think, unless one of you know of a better way, unfortunately, I think you still have to do some kind of finagling to get it to work here. Now, in Premiere, you generally have to use, to create a multicam sequence, you have to highlight all of the media that you want in that sequence, right-click, 
and choose create multi-camera source sequence. I don't believe there's a way to do it if you already have a sequence laid out like this. The problem is, if you go to create that multi-camera source sequence, your options for syncing up those clips are to use the in points, out points, time code. Now you'd think you'd be able to use that, but actually you can't, cannot, um, clip marker or audio. So you could, if you weren't using time code, you could just say audio and it will do its magic and line up the waveforms as best it's ca it can. And that can work if you get good reference audio. So that's another option. But if you're trying to do it with time code, unfortunately, this doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is that Premiere does not recognize an audio track that contains time code as time code. To, the, to Premiere, that's just another audio track. So that's why we had to use the Tentacle Sync Studio. So what we can do, this is my kind of workaround, is I come into the sequence here and zoom way in, and I drop markers at the same exact spot on all three of the clips. Once I've done that, then I can come back in here, highlight the three clips, right click, choose create multi-camera source sequence. And this time I can say to synchronize, use our synchronize point, let's use the clip marker. So that's just gonna use this clip marker here. Line the three of them up based on the first clip marker on each clip. I'll go ahead and leave all these other um, settings as their defaults, click okay. Now we have a new multicam sequence. And we can actually just take this, drop this in here. There's one other thing we have to do that's a little funky. <laughs> um, since we have, it, it actually kept all of the other audio tracks. So what I wanna do is right click and I'm going to unlink these. I can get rid of these other audio cl clips. So this one has nothing on it, we can get rid of that. This has time um, linear time code on it what was recorded to an audio channel, so we can get rid of that. That's some scratch audio, we can get rid of that. And here's another time code clip, we can get rid of that. So once we've done that, I can right click, link those back up, and we're ready to start editing. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail here on how to do multicam editing, but just to get you started, I would then come up to the wrench here and choose multiple cam multi-camera. And then you could start using the little switcher there to choose which of the two clips you want to um, actually show at any given time and you could switch back and forth between them. So there is an overall kind of demonstration on how to do time code and hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, I haven't done a lot of multicam and I don't generally do a lot of multicam and I can see how this is actually still pretty complicated uh, until Tentacle Sync kind of updates their software and makes that a much easier process with Premiere. <laughs> or maybe again, there's something in Premiere that I don't know how to do that one of you may know how to do. Um, it still seems a little bit of work to get everything lined up there when you're using time code. But if you're just using a single camera and a um, obviously a single recorder, lining them up and syncing them up works very, very quickly. And it kind of saves you some time in post and makes things a little easier. One question I got was, is it easier to do time code or is it easier to just sync up the audio? using the regular sync process you would use in Premiere or Final Cut, where you just choose, uh, say over here, you choose a video clip, you choose corresponding audio clip. Whoop, that would be this one. Choose those, right click and choose merge clips. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it really depends on your workflow. I don't think one is better than the other. Time code is more expensive than just merging them <laughs> like this. Um, but this doesn't always work, and sometimes you end up having to do it manually. So it's a trade-off. I don't think one's better than the other. I'm just, we had a lot of requests for time code. This is what time code looks like. Some other considerations with time code. On professional productions, my experience has been is that even when you're using time code, usually you still use a clapperboard in case something goes wrong. That way you can still sync things up pretty easily. If you don't use a clapperboard and you're relying on time code and something gets muddled up, like one of the time code generators didn't get set properly or runs out of battery or something, um, it's a lot easier to also have that clapperboard and it's not difficult to use a, a clapperboard or a slate up front as well. So just some considerations. I hope that's helpful. So there's an overview of time code.